Hey everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott and I'm joined by Josh. Hello, Scott. Hello. It's now Scott Award Day. Oh Jesus, I it know. is. I know, I've been living on it. Our review will be up very, very soon. Maybe before this video, if not. Either way, it should be up today and you guys can, can check it out. It's a very, very good game and I look forward to showing you all of my sorts of thoughts and all of that stuff. But the reason that we're doing a discussion like this is because there's not a whole lot else going on in terms of news. <laughs> not really. Other than people writing about how Corey Balog, Balrog, Balog, oh, yeah, did, is, cry, didn't did he? he was a very <laughs> emotional man because of all the positive reviews, which is really cool. But the thing that we were talking about in the office was just how well the PS4 and Sony in general are doing right now. And there's a whole different set of ways that sort of contribute to this. Um, mainly going off the back of God of War. Yes. Um, because as many people will know from the gameplay footage that's out there, like it's got that whole over the shoulder approach to something. And that seems to be that they're building a brand identity around that. And we saw that in Uncharted 4, The Last of Us, Days Gone seemed to play like that. Even Spidey has the same narrative yep. kind of focus. And it's kind of worth talking about that, although obviously Sony's been around for 20 years now, it seems like now they they have this like mature sensibility to them. And it's pretty interesting to see. For sure. I mean, back in the day, you know, you had your mascots and stuff. You mm. had like, they were sort of, Sony was sort of built on that brand identity. And then the PlayStation 3 came around and Uncharted was the Brick. biggest thing ever. And yeah. like, and ever <laughs> since then they've sort of shifted. Mm. Like they've sort of tried to become that mature story driven like game studio. Mm -hmm. And with the PlayStation 5, I feel like they finally, finally nailed it. Mm -hmm. We, we, I think we all have, have our reservations when God of War was announced and it was over the shoulder and it was like <laughs> same with Days Gone you thought oh this is <laughs> another Souls, Sony what? game no oh Dark Souls yeah Not that. Or you, you just think this is another Sony game mm -hmm. and, but then you sort of think that's a bit weird that you can just say this is a Sony game they have such a distinctive brand identity now that yeah. you can just you can just look at a game and think, yep, yeah, that's a Sony first party mm -hmm. game. It's like it's one of the things where you think of a studio like Rockstar, it's like the mini-map in the corner, the open world, the peppering of missions all around this massive world. That's what makes it a Rockstar game. Obviously, everyone does open world games now. But you think of like Nintendo as a brand identity, and you know, theirs is more rooted in, you know, very cutesy, family-friendly characters, you know, Mar well, mostly family-friendly, Mario Link, but then slightly more mature characters like Samus and that kind of thing. But like I said, like Sony have, have mostly just like, because the PS2 was the most successful console of all time, they didn't really have a way to champion their first party stuff in a way that, you know, builds a personality or an identity. But yeah. I think that's what kind of comes through now, um, which is just interesting. Plus with God of War, um, it is more than indicative of the, of the worth of single player games, single player stories. Um, there are no online components to uh, God of War. There's no microtransactions and loot boxes or anything like that. Um, and it's just great to see because that's the thing. I mean, you know, Sony have like this kind of mature approach to gaming and they're welcoming a lot of the people that grew up and are now in their 20s, 30s even yeah. um, and beyond. Uh, they're well, you know, they're designing characters for those people. And you look at Nintendo, they have they have what they're doing. They're Nintendo, they've always been Nintendo. Cardboard piano is out very soon. And then you look at Microsoft and the Xbox and there's nothing. Yeah, you're like, what is this? Like, you've got Sea of Thieves, you've got Cuphead, which are both, I enjoyed Cuphead lots and yes. lots. But... Oh, I enjoyed it, but it was bloody hard. Yeah. But still, you couldn't put Cuphead on an image and people go, that's Microsoft, that's Xbox. Yeah. Whereas you could have Kratos, Aloy, Nathan Drake, even Joel and Ellie, and you'd go, okay, that's Sony, and likewise with Nintendo. Um, but that's totally worth pointing out that like just they've managed to find their, find a way to mature alongside their audience, and I think that's why people are gravitating towards them. Like God of War is sold out in a whole bunch of outlets right now, yeah. and it's like I don't know. It seems like they're, they're targeting that older demographic. Like I mean, we've grown up alongside these consoles, 100%. and it's pretty cool to see them like reflect that in their marketing, so and their character designs. For as much as um, you get studios and developers talking about how um, single player games are too expensive or they're not, you can't justify them. Mm. To Sony make their entire like living and brand identity off these ridiculously polished, high quality, high budget mm. single player games, mm -hmm. and you know there are some microtransactions in some games like The Last of Us or Uncharted, but for the most part, you know they're they're tapping into a market that most studios are getting away from. Yeah, I think that's what sort of gives them an edge because there's no one else. You know, you get you have CD Projekt Red, you have mm. Rockstar, but even then, GD Online is bigger than probably GDA 5 at this point. Oh god, yeah. So it, is it a case of they them being the only game in town? You know, that well, makes them... I'm very interested to see, I mean, like I said, it's sold out in a lot of outlets, but I'd love to see what happens once you get past those day one sales. Like, I would hope that God of War can reach those kind of heights of, well, it's not going to contend with something with microtransactions and you just can't compete with that sort of living marketplace. But yeah. at the same time, um, the amount of money that's been pumped into God of War does show a confidence from Sony that like, hey, we fully believe that single player stories or just stories in games in general are important and mm -hmm. part of our infrastructure. And that's just great to see. Their biggest single player games, oh, sorry, their biggest games uh, and exclusives and the reasons you buy a PS4 are all stories. Yeah. Horizon, you know, uh, Last of Us, not Uncharted. They're all things that you're going to get lost in and they're all stories that you're going to share with other people. They're not online platforms of content. Like, 
like a, like a Destiny or something yeah. like that, um, which is just really refreshing to see. I think most of the the reason behind this thing was just I just I see a really confident, really good, progressive, innovative Sony, and it's it's a version that I haven't seen for over ten years because yes. the PS3 was a dark time, and uh, it's just good to see them putting their money in the right place. Um, and even outside of that, I mean, you mentioned like VR, like you've got PSVR, oh, yeah. and even like alongside these other things, I mean, whatever you can say about VR, like at least they're putting something out there that, you know, is a way of saying like, this could be the future yeah. eventually, or this could be a way to do it. So That's what's that's so exciting it. for me, because um, you've got these high quality games, you've got VR. To me, it feels like Sony's building a legacy rather than just trying to um, mm. make like games that sell millions of millions and millions of copies. And God <laughs> of War is going to make a lot of money, but yes. it's not going to make a GTA amount of money. No. But it's going to be a game you probably will remember for a long time. Coming into the generation, you'll be thinking about God of War and the time you had like that experience. Yeah. No doubt, you'll be thinking about it when the PlayStation Five comes around. You mm -hmm. get like I don't know, God of War Two, God of War Two. Is that what it'd be called? Yeah, well, that would be confusing. There's apparently a new trilogy coming. Right. So, yeah, but even yeah. with the PlayStation VR, that's not that's probably not turned a great profit for Sony. Mm. But it's an option for players like me to have and really love. And I'm going to look back fondly in my PlayStation Four, not just for. The third party games or the multiplayer games, I'm mm -hmm. gonna remember the stories, I'm gonna remember the VR, I'm gonna remember like those experiences. Yeah. And that might not give Sony the best bottom line. I'm sure it's still healthy. It's pretty good. It's still still great, mm -hmm. but it's not, yeah, like I said, no GDA. But is that more important? Because I know when the PlayStation 5 comes around, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be on board, I'm gonna be like, well, you've smashed out the park here. And I know you've had quibbles with the PlayStation 3 before, but <laughs> you brought you, it back. You, like you said, it's confidence. They've been so yeah. confident. They've done so well. They've been so assertive in that that builds a legacy that I'm going to cling on to when totally. the PlayStation 5 comes around. And it's like, I mean, in terms of confidence, like, I mean, that thing when, you know, the new generation got announced and we saw the Xbox One and everyone was, I mean, the way it, Xbox, the way Microsoft rolled out the Xbox One was a disaster. Yeah. Like, it wasn't very good. Um, but we saw Sony do that hilarious viral thing about sharing your game. Um, and it was, it pointed to a, like I said, again, a personality and identity, a, a whole like idea of like, we've got, I mean, they then went, they went right ahead with all that and it became the, you know, for the players and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that, that kind of dictated the way this generation's gone. They're so far out ahead right now Definitely. that like, there's no way Microsoft's ever going to catch up. But um, it means that, like you said, in terms of bottom lines, like they're, they're more than happy to, to put up these games out and let that speak for the brand. Yeah. They don't necessarily care about something that's more multiplayer focused. But that's one of the most fundamental takeaways is like, it's what, what do you value more in gaming? It's a question for the comments too. Like, is it stories or is it the multiplayer stuff? Because the industry for the long for the last couple of years has been veering more towards into these dynamic multiplayer experiences. Your Destinies, your PUBGs, you know, your Shadow of Wars or whatever. That's not multiplayer, but it's loot focused, um, like with microtransactions and all that. Um, but that's the thing: are they more valuable? Yeah. Can you get by on a, a slightly lower bottom line, but a more satisfied player base? Because there's not such a thing as a satisfied Destiny fan. They don't <laughs> exist. And they True. just have never, never been. We've all yeah. played it for a bit and we felt hooked, hood lined and sinked and knuckled. Yeah. Nickled and dimed. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, oh I love that. Like some of the service games, Overwatch, I'll put countless hours into yes. Rainbow Six Siege. Those are still more than worthy experiences. Mm. And I'm going to look back really fondly on them when the end of the generation comes. Uh -huh. But uh, the, Sony's building characters, they're building like worlds that you're going to like remember. Mm -hmm. And they're going to hopefully pay off as well when, you know, the sequels, spin offs, come, like that stuff comes around. Yeah. So we can talk a little bit about their future as well because um, one of the other games on the horizon, the immediate horizon, is uh, Spider Man. Yes. And that's a way more narrative focused Spider than we've ever had before. There's a lot of like cutscenes, a lot of very well acted stuff. It seems again like they're doing the over shoulder thing, and that's good to see. Uh, and also, they've got Death Stranding at some point in the future, <laughs> 2025 or whatever. Um, but again, they've recruited Hideo Kojima to do an exclusive, who again is someone who focuses on stories. Like Metal Gear 5's online mother based stuff was mostly in there because of Konami, mm -hmm. which you could tell because as soon as he left Konami, they just turned up all the prices and made everybody pay more to do all the online stuff, which was terrible. It's the worst. But you don't make a point of framing these games in this way and have the marketing centered around stories if you're not making that part of your brand identity. Yep. And they now have the characters to twin with that stuff. It's just, it's a great time to be a Sony fan, which is a cliche as hell phrase, but it's, it is, it's a very good thing to see, and Sony are right next to Nintendo. Um, I mean, yeah, one of the best things I think Sony has done this generation in comparison to other uh, console years mm -hmm. is that they've invested in genres and styles of games you don't usually see first party studios True. get for exclusive consoles. Mm -hmm. Like you get first person shooters, you get single player games, but you don't usually get expansive RPGs like Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm -hmm. Those are usually third party experiences like uh, The Witcher or Fallout and mm -hmm. stuff. So to have that on your console 
it's a way to keep players playing without having to nickel and dial them for microtransactions because those Very are true. huge experiences that you keep coming back to and you'd buy the DLC for. Yeah. Which I don't think you saw that much across previous generations. Not no, to this and extent. that's another thing about going like yeah, that's the, that's one of the things like if you're gonna you think of a console and you like okay what am I buying this console for like as much as people want to argue oh the, the industry wants to go back and forward on like the power of exclusivity and what does it mean to have a brand identity in terms of a collection of games you look at like the Switch and within a year they've got like you know Zelda satisfying the whole open world idea Mario is a platformer, Splatoon is a shooter, like in like a snipper clips is a nice little puzzle game. Like they have a nice array of games that satisfies a variety of tastes. Definitely. And like the PS4 has that too. Microsoft doesn't doesn't, doesn't have, have it. Doesn't anything, have but it. The, it's it, it, it's trying to get there. They, they have goodwill. They have backwards yeah. compatibility, which is genuinely which brilliant. Is great. Um, but that's the thing, yeah, it seems like right now the PS4 and Sony are just hitting it out of the park and it's just great to see. So uh, there is no nefarious angle to this, we're genuinely just two happy, happy, happy people. Got a big question you for you though. Oh god, god. Got a huge question for you. Sony have f it up before, they have. will they f it up again <laughs> going into PS5? Because, oh. you know, when competition is everything, right? And yes. Microsoft, I've just hopefully going to come back with like a big push, you know, you don't just they want will. Sony to monopolize the whole thing, no. but we also don't want Sony to get like complacent, which they admittedly haven't. I was scared when they did such a banging job at the start of the generation that they would just be like, this is fine, we can just coast along in this. Yeah. They've, they've gone from strength to strength, mm -hmm. but we've seen it in the past when they've gone from strength to strength, they've got too arrogant, perhaps, <laughs> and um, well, made yeah. some bad decisions. I think a lot of the success of the PS4, like I said before, is it comes off how bad the uh, Xbox One launched, because the 360 was the the console last generation, and Microsoft had all of you know, it was all theirs. The whole like market share, like general sort of like goodwill was yeah. all to them, and they just they f***ed it up like so much. Uh, it, it's reminiscent of when Sony released the released the PS3 or exactly, announced yeah. it, and it was like, hey, it'll be six hundred dollars or something. You're gonna want to get another job to pay for well, it. Well, that's why like, I'm worried because no, Xbox was on top, they messed it up. Before that, Sony was on top, they messed it up. That's why I'm. That's why I'm. <sighs> Not as confident as I may otherwise be. It, it depends how it goes. Right now, they have the goodwill of the people, and they, like I said, they have the market share. They're so far out ahead, and they're bolstering that with a whole bunch of characters that they can take across to another franchise. Sorry, another generation. I mean, it's important to remember that we're five years in now, yeah, and um, we're about to come up on five years. Come about like November-ish, um, which in past console cycles means that they're going to start going into the future. So, does that mean that they launch the PS5 with a Future Horizon game, a God of War game, another like The Last of Us Two? Like, who even knows? Um, but, like I said, it, it's just good to see. So you guys can let us know what you think down in the comments. Do Sony deserve their lead right now? And are you happy with the way that their brand identity has come together? Regardless, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com. I'll catch you guys soon. Bye-bye.